Nobel Prize winner Harold Urey was one of the most respected scientists of the 20th century. Yet, before his death, he revealed a startling secret about the moon. The moon is an odd object in this array, and it is a very odd object, not like the others at all. A discovery made in the clear light of day. This was not just an isolated event, it was the key to a disturbing mystery built from his own chilling warnings and decades of overlooked observations. Join us as we piece together what he witnessed, explore the source of his deep-seated fear, and reveal why his final confession is so hard to ignore. Harold Urey was one of the 20th century's most brilliant scientific minds. He earned global recognition and a Nobel Prize in chemistry for his discovery of deuterium, a heavy isotope of hydrogen, placing him among the elite scientists who shaped modern space exploration. His career was built on precision and a relentless curiosity. However, as he grew older and his health began to fail, Yuri started speaking about something few in his field were willing to acknowledge, something far more mysterious than chemical structures or astrophysical theories. In his final years, Yuri hinted that the moon was not the barren, silent world we've been told it is. He suggested that certain anomalies, often dismissed by mainstream science, were being systematically ignored or deliberately hidden. These weren't vague suspicions. They were carefully noted irregularities seen only under specific conditions. He emphasized that these phenomena were most visible not in the moon's nightly glow, but during its daylight phases, when most people aren't paying attention. It was during these moments, Yuri suggested, that the moon revealed secrets long buried in plain sight. Yuri had always warned against selective vision in science, arguing that ignoring inconvenient Convenient data and dismissing anomalies were practices that held back true discovery. As he neared the end of his life, he implied these same patterns had concealed something extraordinary and perhaps disturbing about the moon. In his final reflections, preserved in notes and the memories of his peers, Yuri left a chilling phrase. It wasn't a cautious scientific statement, but a confession of dread. This is what we feared the most. With those words, the Nobel laureate transformed the moon from a subject of geological study into a stage for an active mystery, hinting that something is still happening there today. Decades later, the world would get a glimpse of what he meant. A video surfaced on social media, capturing the attention of researchers and skeptics. It was filmed in Monterrey, Mexico during the late afternoon, with the moon clearly visible against a bright blue sky. The footage appeared to show unidentified flying objects moving close to the moon's surface. The uploader explained the footage came from a friend who frequently recorded the moon in daylight, believing that if any hidden activity were to be seen, it would be when the sky's brightness conceals its secrets from the casual observer. At first glance, the video seems unremarkable. The moon hangs distant and quiet, but when the camera zooms in, multiple dark structured objects become visible. They weren't irregular shapes like birds or clouds. They glided in formation, cutting across the lunar surface with an uncanny precision that defied easy explanation. A key sequence reportedly captured three synchronized objects casting faint shadows, a detail confirmed across multiple lenses. Without the zoom, these objects would have remained invisible, hiding in plain sight. The footage spread quickly, sparking debate. For those familiar with lunar research, it stirred an unsettling memory, matching almost perfectly what Harold Urey had warned about, that hidden phenomena on the moon were best seen under specific daylight conditions. Eyewitness testimonies began resurfacing, with people recounting similar daytime sightings through telescopes. The Monterey footage was no longer an isolated incident, but part of a growing archive of evidence that couldn't be dismissed as a simple illusion. For those who had studied Urey's work, it was an eerie confirmation of a Nobel Prize winner's final confession. For centuries, the moon has been a source of wonder and speculation. Early astronomers documented strange flashes of light on its surface, sudden shadows that appeared and vanished, and movements that seemed inconsistent with its known geography. These events, catalogued as transient lunar phenomena, could not be consistently explained or replicated, so most were dismissed as atmospheric distortions or observational errors. However, Harold Urey stood apart. He insisted that such anomalies were not distractions, but opportunities to uncover hidden truths. The moon is unique because, unlike Earth, it has no atmosphere to erode its history. Every crater and scar is preserved across billions of years. The moon is an odd object in this array. Where Earth's history is washed away by wind and water, the moon's is permanently displayed. The danger, Yuri believed, was not that the moon would remain mysterious, but that humanity would simply choose not to see. He argued that the very clues brushed aside as mistakes could reveal something extraordinary. The moon, he insisted, was a silent witness, 
and its silence held secrets. Harold Urey was not a man to be dismissed as eccentric. A towering figure in science, his discovery of deuterium earned him the Nobel Prize in 1934. When Urey spoke, people listened, not because he was flamboyant, but because his intellect was unimpeachable. Yet beneath his respectable career lay a deep obsession with the moon. To most of his peers, it was a lifeless rock. To Yuri, it was a vault of secrets, a silent witness to the origins of our solar system and perhaps to mysteries far beyond our comprehension. His conviction was grounded in rigorous science. He scorned easy explanations and grew impatient with colleagues who closed debates prematurely. He challenged prevailing theories about the moon's formation, always pointing to evidence that didn't fit. But his curiosity went beyond geology. In private conversations, he hinted that the moon might hold evidence of phenomena science was unwilling to confront. He didn't claim to understand reports of unidentified flying objects, but he refused to dismiss them. To Yuri, anomalies were not noise, they were signals. The moon was a mirror reflecting the limits of human knowledge, and he believed it was the one place where those limits could be broken. That conviction soon found its way into the halls of power as America prepared to journey into space. In December 1958, a series of planning meetings, as described by colleagues at NASA headquarters, shaped the future of the American space program. The space race was on, and Harold Urey, along with astrophysicist Robert Jastro, American astronomer looking for something else, pressed hardest for the moon to be the primary target. Urey's case was urgent. The moon, unlike Earth, preserved an untouched record of the solar system's beginnings and could answer fundamental questions about the origin of life. But Yuri's reasoning went deeper. He insisted that the moon could not be understood through geology or astronomy alone. He pushed for interdisciplinary collaboration, as if he suspected its mysteries were not just natural, but might include artificial or external influences. These meetings led to the Ranger, Surveyor, and eventually the Apollo programs. Yuri's influence was present at every stage, but even as the nation celebrated its technological triumphs, he remained unsettled. He urged colleagues not to ignore irregularities in the data or smooth over unexplained observations. To trusted friends, he confessed that certain findings confirmed his deepest fears, once saying in a hushed, strained voice, this is what we feared the most. When the Apollo missions brought back lunar rocks, the world celebrated. For Harold Urey, however, the triumph was mixed with disquiet. The data, instead of clarifying the moon's history, revealed contradictions. Radiometric dating showed the surface was older than much of Earth's. Gravity anomalies known as mascons puzzled scientists, and evidence for both intense volcanic activity and a cold, rigid body created conflicting narratives. Yuri became a thorn in the side of his colleagues, raising new objections for every proposed solution. He insisted that anomalies like lights, shifting shadows, and reports of movement had to be taken seriously. Long after the Apollo program ended and political interest waned, Yuri's obsession with the moon never faded. While other scientists moved on, he returned to lunar questions again and again. Some colleagues later speculated he had learned more from classified data than he ever admitted, or that he had connected scattered anomalies into a larger, more troubling picture. To the end of his life, he seemed driven by the weight of a discovery too heavy to bear alone. What did he see? And why did the moon, our silent companion, become a source of such dread for him? As his life drew to a close, Harold Urey left behind a final, unsettling warning. He suggested the moon might not be a barren relic, but a stage for ongoing concealed phenomena. He hinted that what humanity dismissed as shadows or optical illusions could, in fact, be evidence of deliberate activity. It was the work of something or someone operating with intent. His fear seemed to be that this truth was so disturbing it could destabilize public trust in science and government. To admit that our nearest celestial neighbor harbored unexplained deliberate activity would shatter the tidy narrative of a cold, lifeless satellite. And so, Yuri made what many now see as his ultimate confession. The anomalies were not illusions. The objects were not mistakes. He believed they were real. His revelation was stark in its simplicity. The moon was never as empty as we believed. In saying this, he pitted his entire life's work against decades of official denial. Half a century after Yuri's death, the questions he raised are resurfacing. Armed with advanced telescopes, amateur astronomers repeatedly capture footage of strange objects transiting the lunar surface in broad daylight. These objects appear with precision, sometimes in formation, defying conventional explanation. The key, just as Yuri predicted, lies in the timing. They emerge during the transitional phases of lunar light when contrast sharpens and details hidden in glare or shadow become visible. 
Yuri's warning, the moon is not silent, now echoes through these modern discoveries. If the moon is not silent, then it speaks in ways we have failed to recognize. If it is not lifeless, then life, or something like it, operates there in secret. The implications stretch far beyond astronomy, forcing us to ask, are we truly alone? What forces share this corner of the cosmos with us? And why have they remained hidden in plain sight for so long? As the footage accumulates and the voices of independent observers grow louder, Harold Urey's testimony bridges past speculation with present discovery. His life, his science, and his chilling final confession remind us that not all mysteries can be explained away. The strange daylight sightings and the silence from official channels leave us with one haunting question. Was Yuri trying to warn us about something on the moon that humanity still isn't ready to face?